obviously you could do a lot with CG and everything could be kind of a green screen movie. What we're trying to do and what I've always found take something and makes it extra special is to take something and have as much real as possible in the frame. How do you invent Gotham for real? How do you prep Gotham for real? And that led us to improving our technology. The city of Gotham is a character in the movie. And so you're like, how do we really, like, how do we do this for real? And if you want to do it with the best quality to make it look real, you want to avoid anything that looks like, you know, bad visual effect shots. We're using the LED volume. We're trying to do as much in camera as possible. Now that's still using new technologies. But the goal is to create as photo real an experience as we can. So Greg Frazier is lighting with practicals. The light in the set is coming from the set itself, by and large. It's a huge movie, so there's big extension. Having done this before on another show, I saw the power of this very early on, and it's a positive for the final viewer when something is shot in camera. By pushing the technology along on Batman, Warner Brothers is going to make it more accessible to the next DP that does the next show. This is one of those things that has to be done this way because you can't go back in terms of progress when you've seen something perform as well as it can. To move backwards onto a traditional blue screen stage feels to me like it's not doing justice to the Batman. That's one of the big advantages with the LED stages. You can essentially freeze time. You can put up a you know golden hour sunset and you can have that sunset last as long as you need while you're doing the photography. When you're shooting you know, out on location, you'll shoot a bunch of stuff one direction at sunrise, you'll shoot a bunch of stuff the other direction at sunset, just so that the lighting is better on the actor's face, depending on which direction they're facing. With the LED setup, you can, you know, you can essentially spin the world, you can spin the sky, hold the world stationary. So we're making a lot of advancements in terms of how robust we can make this technology. Having these panels work in the rain is only possible by pushing that envelope, and that's certainly something that we've been excited to be a part of. It was exciting to work in the volume because you feel like you're at the forefront of something. The volume work that had been done had been in desertscapes, not in cityscapes. And so the idea of virtually creating a city and James working hard with the artists to try and lay out this city in a way that felt really signature to us. It was an opportunity to see Gotham, the animal that is the city, the character that is the city, you know, perform for us. Hey. Help me out, man! Shut up! Not that way. There is no other way. He owns the city. You know, me and Rob had this emotional scene on the on a roof, and to really have the cityscape, it was a game changer. It was incredible what they were able to do. All that stuff took months and months of planning inside a computer or game space before we started building. It allows us to make the the entirety of the set more real, makes the lighting more real, makes the photography ultimately look more real. In addition to the, the benefit that it gives us from a, a technical standpoint, you've also got the, the rest of the environment there, so the actors can experience the space. As they're driving the cars, they can react to what they're, what's coming at them on the screens. <laughs> I got you! <laughs> I got you! <laughs> <laughs>